There's an old ghost story around here about a woman named Mary Shaw. Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Corp Productions. And uh, welcome to a new exciting series of tutorials that will cover mainly motion graphics. Now, I released this video not too long ago. This is just a new intro that I have uh, for uh, my, uh, my tutorials and, and some of the videos. And some of you guys have been asking how I did some of this stuff and I've been re receiving a couple emails on you know wanting to learn how to do motion graphics. So I thought I might as well do a, a short series of tutorials, uh, short tutorials, not too, uh, nothing too complicated, but that kind of show what is involved in, uh, in doing some of this stuff. So we're not gonna really go into creating some of the shape layers that you see, such as these little animations, but we will go into, let's see here, uh, creating like this, uh, this infinite background and um, we're gonna be focusing on how to really use uh, keyframes in After Effects and animations to their full potential. So it's gonna be a lot of exciting stuff. Uh, it may not seem in the examples that I'm using, but you know, once you apply it for your own projects, you can make some really, really interesting looking stuff. So, all right, let's uh, jump into After Effects. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is go under composition, new composition, and uh, you know, I'm just gonna do the regular uh, 1920 by 1080, that's just standard HD, 24, everything else is fine, and uh, click OK. The first thing that I'm going to do here is create that infinite background. So there's a couple ways of doing this, but the way that I find easiest is to create a new solid. So I right click in this area, new, solid. Uh, it can be any color that you want. You just call it background. Click OK. Then we're going to go under the effects and presets tab. And I actually have it pulled up already, but if you don't, go ahead and type in ramp and drag that onto our uh, background layer. So you can do a few things with uh, with this kind of ramp. You can make a, you know, a cool little floor that kind of goes into uh, into the darkness or something like that. You can change these colors up. But what we're actually going to be doing is switching from linear ramp to radial ramp, and this will create kind of a, a faded circle that we can uh, we can place in the middle here. For uh, let's see, for the start color, we'll do we can do white. And then for the end color, we can do uh, we can do a really dark gray, something like that is fine. And then we're going to push this uh, this knob over here all the way out. So now we have this uh, this pretty interesting uh, looking gradient that will be as our background. You can go ahead and lock this in so that you know if I click on it, it won't do anything. Um, we don't need to move this. We don't need to do anything with this uh, beyond this point because it's just going to be our background. So let's start with some some text. Let's uh, type in motion graphics. That is really small. So let's make this, I don't know, let's try 100. All right. You can notice that the anchor point is way off to the side here. Uh, you want to hit Y on your keyboard. Uh, yours may be in different positions, but usually you just want to keep it in the center. That looks pretty good. Go back to your regular cursor here. And now we have uh, we have this text. Let's make it a little bit easier to read. Let's pick a darker gray. There we go. You can even make an outline uh, for this. Make a white outline or something like that. I actually have a separate tutorial that goes uh, a lot more in depth into uh, titles and text and animating those uh, those titles. And this stuff can really come in useful into all kinds of stuff, especially motion graphics. So if you have time. Check out this uh, this tutorial. You can find it on my channel or on my website. It's part of the basic series that I did on After Effects. But anyways, um, so yeah, if I'm going a little fast here, it's because I covered everything in a separate tutorial. But all we did here is created an outline. We can make it a little bit thicker, maybe three. Yeah, let's try two. All right, doesn't look too bad. And um, what we want to do is animate this. So we created our background. It looks pretty nice. We created our text. And by the way, I'm using Novecento. That's a really great font that I use maybe too much. I, uh, I overuse it quite a bit. And by the way, I made a video on uh, the most popular fonts that are used for motion graphics. Uh, you can find this video on my channel. I'll put a link in the description as well. It's a list of 100 fonts. So definitely check out this video and check out that website. Uh, but anyways, going back to... After Effects, let's uh, let's create an animation for this. Hit P on your keyboard, that will bring up the position of this layer. And we're gonna set a keyframe here. Now we're gonna go back in time and we're gonna make this layer disappear. So we're actually gonna have it come in from the bottom to the center over here. All right, so now you can see that we have our animation 
just uh, just moving up. This may be a little a little too slow. Let's actually increase the speed of it. I'm just dragging the last keyframe in, and this will this will speed things up a little bit. Let's uh, preview this again. Okay, that's not too bad, but it's a little bit boring. It's kind of a bland animation. It doesn't have much interest going to it. Uh, it's definitely not what you see in all those uh, fancy motion graphic intros. So to do that, one of the first steps that I'm going to do is select both keyframes, right click on them, go to keyframe assistant, and uh, select easy ease. Notice that the shortcut for this is F9. And notice that once I select that, our um, diamond keyframes turn into these uh, hourglass looking keyframes. And uh, if I preview this again, you're going to notice that it actually has a little bit of a speeding up and slowing down effect to it. It may not be too noticeable here because uh, the animation is so fast, but what I'm going to show you guys is if I undo this, so we're back to the regular animation, if I go under my um, keyframe graph editor, if I click this, you're going to notice this line and then it drops off. And let's take a second to, uh, to actually understand what this uh, graph is showing us. These are the amount of pixels, and uh, this is just our regular timeline as far as frames in this case, or you can zoom out, and it will be in seconds. So it's pixels over time. What we're looking at here is a linear animation, and what this means is that our text appears, and it just stops. So it abruptly starts, reaches its endpoint, and it abruptly ends. This is what this line is showing us. Now let's take a look at what happens when we do the same exact thing as before. We select both keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Now let's go back to our graph editor and you're going to notice that it's a curve because now our text layer is actually speeding up. It's about to reach its point here. It's halfway through its animation. So now it's going to start to slow down and reach its endpoint over here. And once we have an animation created, we have full control and we can uh, we can create all kinds of fun stuff. So let's uh, let's take a look at what we can do. We can just grab these uh, these uh, these knobs over here and and push them to create different curve shapes. And uh, what this shape will do is obviously affect the animation of this uh, of this text layer. So let's uh, preview this again. And what we're gonna see is that it pretty much just jumps up really fast and then it, it, it slows down. So now the animation is much different. It's almost like a car going from red light to green light, speeding up real fast and then notices a cop in the distance and it's like, uh oh, let me, uh, let me slow down here. So definitely a lot better than a linear animation. This looks a lot more dynamic and a lot more interesting. So I would suggest just taking the time to play around with, uh, with this graph editor and the curves in it. Uh, animate different properties. For example, we can, uh, we can add a scale animation. If I select a layer, hold shift and hit S on my keyboard, it's going to bring up the scale and uh, keep the position here. So I'm going to add a keyframe for the scale. Let's say that once it reaches here, I want it to scale up. Uh, to about here and then shoot back to zero. So it's gonna disappear. So let's uh, expand our work area here. Let's see what this does. That's probably gonna look really slow. Uh, let's see here. All right, comes up, scales up, and then disappears. Yeah, that is super slow. You can move the keyframes here uh, let's see, let's make this really fast and then disappear really fast. Let's try something like that. Okay, so hit spacebar again. There we go, a lot quicker. Maybe too quick in the last part. Let's just do that. And uh, let's go ahead and easy ease these keyframes as well. All right, so now back at our graph editor, we can see that it's uh, instead of just jumping from point A to point B to point C, it's actually kind of creating this curve. So it smoothens it out pretty much if you want to look at it that way. Let's hit play again. Again, you can play around with all these curves. 
you can make it a lot more dramatic. That's not bad. Um, you can see at the end that it kind of flips over. That's because it, it moves past zero, goes actually into the negatives. Make sure that doesn't happen. You know, when you're um, into graph editor mode, you're not only affecting the time of, of the animation, you're also affecting the uh, percentage of pixels. And in this case, we were affecting the percentage of pixels of the scale and how big it gets. So you can just put zero on that just to make sure that it doesn't do any weird stuff that we don't want it to do. So that is the basic principle of animating with the graph editor in After Effects. Uh, it, it may seem confusing because you're, you know, you're looking at uh, graphs. And I remember trigonometry from high school. And uh, let's just say that it wasn't really my favorite subject. So I was immediately intimidated when uh, first learning this kind of stuff. Say, you do your homework? What homework? You know, your math. Oh, that? Sure. But I couldn't get the last one. Oh, great. That's the one I was wondering about. Once you get a hang of it, it's really just... Uh, Look at it like drawing, you know, you're drawing an animation and uh, affecting how it looks like. So there's no set rules for this. Just play around with it, get comfortable and um, kind of learn to uh, visually understand what the graph is doing uh, to the animation. And that will definitely help you out. Say, what happened to your face? Oh, this? Cut myself shaving. Yeah. So pretty much this entire tutorial will just uh, show you a couple of tools on how to do certain things, but everything else is always up to personal preference. I say that a lot. That's because it is, you know, it's not math. There's no set rules. This is uh, more of what looks right to you. Now, one last thing that I want to show you guys, going back to the original example here, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a cool tip that I usually use for uh, animating objects in After Effects. You're going to notice it with this text. It kind of has a bounce to it. I personally love these, these bouncy looking animations. It, it, it not only makes it look more dynamic, it also adds a little bit of uh, realism because you're, you're adding that, that velocity to that layer and you're visually seeing it kind of come to a stop. And I don't know, it just adds, uh, it's just pleasing to the eye in my opinion. And I just want to show you guys real quick what I do to, uh, to achieve that. And it's really, really simple. Uh, you can kind of achieve it with, uh, you know, with the graph editor and what you just saw here. So let's get rid of these keyframes. So we're going to start with a scale of zero. And for this, make sure that your anchor point is in the center of the text, just like how we changed it in the beginning of this video. So we're going to set a keyframe for the scale. We're going to move up three frames or so, depending on how fast you want the animation to be. And let's bring it up to 100 and, uh, 110. Now, the idea with this uh, second keyframe is to over-exaggerate the, uh, the scale amount. So let's say you want its, uh, its final resting size to be 100%. You want to over-exaggerate for the second keyframe. So we're going to go beyond 100% to 110%. Then we're going to move forward uh, about two or three keyframes. And we're going to, instead of bringing it back down to 100%, we're going to bring it back to 95. Then we're going to move two or three more keyframes bring it back to, let's say, 105, three more keyframes, bring it back to 100. This may be uh, a slow animation. We might need to uh, bring these keyframes a little bit closer together, but let's take a look at what we have so far. All right, so this animation might look a little bit too dramatic and a little bit too slow, um, but you get the idea of how to recreate that bouncy uh, animation look to your layers in After Effects. You can use this for so many things, and uh, it definitely adds a little bit of interest to whatever you're animating. Again, you can always easy ease these keyframes. You can, uh, well, you can bring in a little bit uh, closer together instead of three frames maybe one frame or two frames let's take a look at this definitely a lot uh, faster you might want to make it a little bit less dramatic uh, especially here instead of going back to 105 you can make 102 or so and then it goes back to 100 so let's take a 
look at that yeah that looks a little bit better so definitely play around with uh, with these values and get a look that really matches what you're going for uh, adjust the speed you can even go into the graph editor and uh, you know select the scale and mess around with the curve uh, that way hey you know something no what I had a wet dream last night so I hope this uh, this helps a little bit at understanding kind of what went into this uh, this logo that I created. Now this is really basic uh, motion graphic stuff. I mean, there's a lot of talented people on YouTube. Uh, I've seen videos of really advanced stuff, but I figured this would be a good start. And uh, since I've been asked um, quite a bit on, on how I did some of these things, it would be uh, I thought it'd be pretty cool to uh, do a short series on uh, basic motion graphics, and then maybe in the future we could do uh, something a little bit more advanced. But next time, I'm thinking of uh, showing how to animate these shape layers and creating some of that, that shine effect that you saw in the beginning there and uh, a couple other things related to uh, motion graphics. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial so far. If you have any suggestions on what you want to see specifically to motion graphics, go ahead and post it in the comment section below because this is the first video that I'm planning to doing on a uh, series of videos for motion graphics. But nothing is set in stone yet, so uh, I'm really open to suggestions as far as uh, what you guys want to see. And also, I have a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Uh, I'm working on a video called Real Life Grand Theft Auto. And uh, it's going to have a lot of shooting. I've been working on it quite a bit. And uh, a lot of planning and permits are involved for this one. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. And I'm also going to be shooting it um, with the intention of uh, having it paired with an intense look at how we did everything, uh, behind the scenes footage, tutorials that go along with that. So I'm definitely excited for that stuff. And if this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe, I would love to have you back and uh, check out the rest of my stuff. But anyways, before I start rambling on, I do have a lot of cool uh, projects coming up that I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. But um, before I waste any more of you guys' time, I'm gonna go ahead and end this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Gore Productions and I will see you next time. An ejaculation. That's it for today. Everybody inside. Come on. <laughs>